everybody and welcome to A Stitch in Time. Today is Thursday, April 6, 2017, and this is episode 13. Feeling lucky. I'll tell you why I'm feeling lucky in a little while, but in the meantime I'll introduce myself. My name is Carol and you can find me as Knits and Pearls on Ravelry. The uh, show notes for this and every episode can be found on the blog at A Stitch in Time podcast blogspot.ca. If you're watching, you've obviously found the podcast, but there are a few ways you can watch. One is via the YouTube channel, A Stitch in Time Podcast, and if, you like to, uh, if you'd like to know when new episodes are uploaded, uh, go ahead and subscribe on there. Also, I always post a link to the podcast in, on the blog and also in the A Stitch in Time Ravelry group. Um, I always create a, a thread for each week's episode and put a link to the podcast in there too. So, um, yeah, so come join the Ravelry group. I'd love to, to have you there. Uh, it's becoming more active all the time, so I appreciate everyone who's participating over there and making it a nice, uh, creating a nice community on another, another little community on Ravelry. Uh, if you'd like, you can join in the Agatha Christie along. It's just a knit along I'm holding in conjunction with reading my way through my Agatha Christie collection. And the uh, rules are very simple. Uh, knit or crochet any project inspired by either um, one of the book's titles or a character or Agatha Christie herself. And uh, if you can find a way to connect it to a book, uh, I'm really easy. Go ahead and... and uh, the important thing is just to join in and, and get to know each other. So this week's episode is going to include what I'm wearing, uh, a really little finished project. I have lots of works in progress, a um, blast from the past, and uh, what I'm reading, and also a little bit about my week. And of course, I'm going to let you know why I'm feeling lucky this week. So let's start with what I'm wearing. Uh, Actually, I was lucky last year about this time. My, um, I had participated in the Very Busy Monkey uh, January to March Knit Along, and I was chosen as one of the winners and allowed to, a, um, allowed to choose a pattern uh, from the Very Busy Monkey pattern collection. And so I chose this Eternal Spring Shawl, and then I knit it for the next Knit Along. It, I'll show you what it looks like, and then I'll talk about it a little bit. It's a really nice, kind of a crusted shaped shawl. I really like that shape. And you can see it's got this beautiful Pico edging and this lovely kind of leafy lace pattern that, bought, that uh, borders this little garter stitch section. And the yarn I knit it from is Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light in the Shire colorway and I had lusted after this color for a long time before I finally uh, broke down and ordered it and it did not disappoint it's gorgeous okay that's not so bad for a first attempt <laughs> always a, it's always a challenge to get these things just right so um <coughs> pardon me so what have I been working on well just this morning, I, <laughs> I have a friend of mine, and we were together a few weeks ago. There's a group of friends that get together once a month, and we were at her place, and she showed me her teddy bear that she'd had as a child and asked me if I would... Um, it's, it's the pads of its feet were getting threadbare, and she asked if I would make her some little booties for it. Um, and she gave me this yarn that she'd picked up as just a fluffy one of these novelty yarns and um, so very scientific here took a few measurements traced the foot <laughs> and the result is I found I went on Ravelry because I didn't even know where to start and um, I found a pattern by uh, her name's Amy Richen R-I-C-H-A-N uh, it was doll slippers for um, an American doll 
size and I took it and kind of adapted it. So I just made, I did these this morning. I have no idea if they're going to fit. I have a feeling they might be a little big, but I'll, I'll let her try them and look one's even like smaller than the other. <laughs> Um, I'll let her try them on and if they're not quite right, I can uh, kind of adjust the powder. But yeah, there's my um, fancy uh, finished project for this week. Here, I'm just, I've got stuff everywhere, so I'm just going to move these back over here out of the way. And before I launch into my million and a half works in progress, I'm just going to have a sip of water. So first up this week, I've got actually quite a bit done on my Sherlock socks. Um, the yarn, let me go with the tag in the bag. It's a Knit Picks Felici in the Baker Street colorway, if you've seen that before. And I'm knitting these concurrently, two at a time on separate, separate needles. Uh, they're twisted here. So you can see I've got quite a bit done. I've... Uh, Finished the heel on here, done all the leg, finished the heel, and I'm just starting up the leg now. Now, um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do for the heel. Oh, and I've got that done on both. Um, but then I, I remember I had this Knit Pick Stroll in the Dove Heather colorway, and I thought it matched this lightest gray really well. When I was holding it uh, just before I knit with it and I put a strand across it actually blended in really well. It's not quite the same but it's very close. You can see there's the join there. So I think that complements it quite well and since they start with a with the light cuff it kind of balances it too. I have no idea what color they'll end on and I'm not sure if I will do a um, contrasting toe or not. I might if it if it ends up that it's not going to end on this color, uh, then I might go ahead and do that just just for fun. But anyway, these are just my, as usual, my, you know, TV, at sitting around, kind of knitting, driving in the car or whatever. A little tangled here. Put those away. So I'm not going to show it, but I did work a little bit more on my Celestarium shawl this week. I did a few more rounds. But as I mentioned last week, I'm not going to show it every week. There's, it doesn't look a whole lot different from week to week, and it's hard to show to great advantage anyway because it is on circular needles and just all kind of bunched up on them. So, um, but I was glad to uh, do a little more work. I'm hoping to work on it at least a little bit every week. Uh, I started some new things. A uh, new month, new uh, knit along for the Grocery Girls Sock Bash. So... Um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I kind of had a few few different ideas and what I settled on was this pattern called Spring Showers. And since she quotes, um, April showers bring May flowers in the uh, very first line, I thought it was an appropriate pattern for April. It's by, um, I don't know if it says on here, no, it's by uh, Christy Payne, Christy H. Payne. So you can see it has that kind of a, uh, what she calls an umbrella motif back here and then um, a floral or leafy motif up the front. Um, now I must have really liked this pattern because I purchased it and downloaded it and when I added it to my uh, documents on my computer it uh, asked me if I wanted to substitute it for the other file of the same name that was already there. So it looked like I bought it, well I assume I bought it, unless I had downloaded it as a free pattern. Maybe sometimes you know designers offer their patterns free for a short time. In any case it was already in my library so I own it twice now. Um, anyway, I decided to pair it with this yarn which is um, called, uh, it's Soctopus Socus so Kusu in the spring storm colorway. So I'm calling them my April rain socks because of all the references to April and spring and rain. And this is the yarn. It's really pretty. It's a kind of a gray background with just hints of lavender and green and pink. Very subtle. Not quite the same. That's probably a better representation. 
and I got quite a bit done on it. Um, I didn't even realize too when I started it it's actually a toe-up sock which I haven't knit for a long time so that was kind of fun and um, and when I did my segment uh, my second part of my episode last week and I talked about gussets and at the time I said I've never seen anything other than a traditional gusset on a toe-up sock but um, as it turns out this has I think what's called a riverbed gusset so this is the bottom of the sock. So we started increasing quite early on in the sock and the directions were really good for figuring out where to start increasing for your gusset. Uh, there was a whole little formula to work out depending on your own gauge and the um, number of stitches I guess it was. And so um, and then something else I've never done before that I can remember is there's a little bit of reinforcing reinforcement stitching going on in the heel itself and then carry it on up the heel flap. Now uh, it looks like this is actually supposed to be a traditional slip stitch heel flap but I I monkeyed with the um, short row method that was used in the pattern. Uh, long story short is I ended up doing starting to do an eye of partridge heel kind of by accident and I decided just to just to carry on because it's fun anyway and it looks pretty. So that's that texture there. So there's the uh, lace motif going up the front. And then I've just got one repeat of that little umbrella pattern going up the back. So I tried it on and they, they do fit. So um, that's why always my biggest worry with toe up socks is am I going to get, uh, um, you know, so far and then find out they they don't fit but they should be okay even on my right foot which is a little bit smaller than my left foot I, it'll be okay <laughs> so that was good so my next work in progress is my uh, latest cast on for the Agatha Christie along I've moved on to uh, the murder at the vicarage and actually you can see I've read quite a bit of it this week it's holding my attention uh, so I thought it would be fun to do a pattern that was um, connected if I could find one. Um, as the book title, this is the I think 100th, 100th anniversary edition of this book and it's Miss Marple's First Case. So those of you who are familiar with Agatha Christie um, surely know Miss Marple and even though probably some of you that aren't have heard that name. So I thought it would be fun to do a Miss Marple related project or something and none of them really, none of the ones I could find really appealed to me but then looking down the list that I'd compiled for the Agatha Christie along, I found a pattern called The Vicar's Wife, which is a reference to the, the um, to this book and the vicar and his wife. And as um, the designer describes it, she said, uh, this pattern reflects the age-old May-December romance seen so often in the 20th century and earlier British novels. The leaf motif, which trails down the front of the sock, reflects the blooming youth of May, fresh, energetic, and hopeful. Griselda Clement, or Clement in Murder in the Vicarage by Agatha Christie. On the back of the sock is the bare winter tree of December, the aged and sensible vicar Leonard Clement, her husband. So that's a really neat description of the pattern. Uh, I can show you a picture of the front. Here's the flowery motif and then there's the uh, motif to reflect the husband. So actually I had another yarn that I really wanted to use for this pattern but I, I thought it would be too variegated and I think this with all the um, detailed stitches and such it really needs a, a solid or a semi-solid yarn so I was trying to think of the most unvicker or un uh, unvicker's wife color uh, that that I could you'd think vicar's wife subdued etc and I decided uh, to go for hot pink because <laughs> the character in this story she is not the typical vicar's wife she's young and kind of um uh, not irreverent exactly, but but certainly not what you picture when you picture a vicar's wife. So here I've got this started on the front, and then there's the uh, motif running down the back. 
And even though I didn't intend it, it actually like matches the book cover very well. So that's a, just a just a plus. <laughs> uh, did I show you the yarn name? This is the uh, yarn itself. Very pretty, and it is that bright. It's beautiful, um, and it is ancient arts, and it's three ply fingering in the flamboyant colorway. So this pattern I've adapted a little bit. Um, it was giving me a little bit of trouble when I first cast on. Um, I'm pretty picky, anal, um, detail oriented, in case you haven't figured that out yet. And one of the things that bothered me about the pattern is on this is the back column and there's a um, uh, an uneven number of stitches across the front and the back and it was written so that one side of the uh, column of center design had I think it was six stitches and the other had seven and I just it, so it wasn't centered and that that just really messed with my sense of symmetry. And so I ended up adding a stitch on to the one side, but then I had to then add a stitch to the front in order to make the front and the back the same. So I just added an extra stitch um, in the middle here, this pearl thing, pearl, pearl area. Now that runs down the sock. And so because I did that, I had to adjust the ribbing. And so it's a it's a two by two twisted rib. So I just added an extra pearl stitch on the center of the front and then I did the same at the back. And I just feel better about it. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I, well, I, this may be an error in the pattern or maybe it was just something she would assume that you do, but on the pattern itself, she just says to do a two by two twisted rib, but if you look, and then, then you start the chart, but if you look at the um, sample sock, you can see that this um, rib, or this purl section here, lines up with the purl section in the stitch design. Um, but if you were to do the pattern as written, it would be offset by one stitch. So I, I didn't like that either, so I, I adjusted it so that it would line up and then that kind of helped. Also, this was a little bit off because of the uneven number of stitches that was originally used. These things didn't all weren't all centered either. Now they are. So that I just feel a little better about that. That's just my um, my pickiness. I know attention to detail, but to me it was just um, just something I I couldn't really live with and had to mess with to make myself feel better. <laughs> <laughs> just who I am, I can't help it. <laughs> um, I have one more uh, project to talk about, and um, this, uh, when I went to Fibers West a few weeks ago, uh, Lana Knits, or um, Hemp for Knitting, had a booth, and I was talking to the woman there, I think it might be the owner, but I'm not positive, and uh I think it was about seven years ago or so, uh, my husband and I had uh, taken a little trip around BC and we'd ended up in Nelson, BC. It's in the Kootenai region of, of BC. Uh, we ended up there for um, overnight. And I had done my research and I knew there was a, a yarn shop there and I don't remember if it was in doing that research or if I already knew, but but Nelson is the home of um, Hemp for Knitting and the designer, um, the owner, and then she does a lot of patterns to support her yarn line. And so I had it in my mind that I was going to visit the yarn shop there that carried the um, Hemp for Knitting yarn and buy a sweater's quantity as kind of a souvenir of the trip. So so I did do that. And it, um, I remember it took me a little while to figure out what pattern I wanted to do and what color, and they didn't even have enough of the color in stock. So 
they actually ordered it and, and shipped it after, I think, if I remember. So I had started swatching for it, and um, I didn't like the way the yarn felt. If you've worked with linen or some cottons, there's not a lot of give, and it's kind of hard and ropey, and um, I think at some point I had picked a different pattern and swatched for it and couldn't get gauge and just I, I basically just put this stuff away and 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 left it so after talking to the woman there one thing I talked about was what to, I could do to make the yarn easier to work with and she suggested soaking it in a bunch of hair conditioner and um, so I, I had that filed in the back of my head and then just sounded really goopy and kind of a nuisance to have to skein it all back up again and do that because I had um, wound it all into cakes. So then I was watching um, a couple of podcasts lately that were talking about linen. One was the um, the Yarn Hoarder podcast. She was uh, had been working with linen making some uh, uh, string bags. And then I was watching the Little Bobbins Knits podcast and she was talking about this linen bath mitt she'd knit and how it softened up so much after she'd washed it. So I thought, you know, I really should pull out that pattern again and that yarn and give it another go. Because when I was at the booth at Fibers West, there were samples and it, and it really did feel lovely done up. It's just the working with it that's, that's not so pleasant. So yesterday, um, I just had the whim to pull it out so I, I went into my trunk and I found it. So this is the pattern that I'm going to be knitting and it's a beautiful just a lace uh, pullover top. You can wear it with like a camisole underneath and um, this is the yarn. It's called uh, Hemp for Knitting All Hemp 6 and this is color 27 aubergine. So it's a beautiful color, as you can see. It, it looks like it has a bit of a sheen um, on camera. It's not quite as shiny as that in, in real life, but if you can see, it's got quite, um, it's quite a coarse yarn. And there's, I think there, I think I counted eight, six or eight plies. Here we go. See, and if you can see, it just kind of comes apart when it's cut. So let's see, one, Two, three, four. Yeah, I think there's eight plies here. Yeah. Um, so when you knit it up, it is... I've meant to take a picture of my swatch before I blocked it so that you could see... Sorry, I got bags all over here. Anyway, I did uh, not did not remember to take a picture. I'm not sure if you can tell. I've got this started. And if you can see, the stitches are, are not tightly knit together. And they're stiff and it's all, you know, it just does not look... Um, oops, I've got lots of stitch there. It slides off needles easily. I found that out. Oh, I've lost my stitch marker too, but I know where I am. Sorry, this is makes for great podcasting, doesn't it? Uh, this is the center. It's interesting too. You start at the center back. So I'm trusting it and um, see how it goes. So there's there's the front and um, that color is pretty good. It's it's not quite as reddish. It's got it's a little bit duller, but but that's pretty good. Um, so they does have, I did, uh, excuse me, out of frame here. I know I tucked my samples in somewhere so I could show you the swatches. Oh, here they are. So this is a swatch I had originally done. And I don't know, I, t I wrote down in my little booklet what uh, the stitch and row gauge were pre-blocking. But I never wrote what size needles I'd used, and I didn't write what the measurement was after blocking. So it's definitely softened up a lot. Now this has had two washings because I, when I came across it, I wasn't 
sure it had been washed and so I gave it another soak and so this is quite a bit softer. This is the swatch I did for this sweater. It went up. It calls for a five millimeter for the main part and I ended up with a four and a half millimeter which is pretty common for me to go down that much so that's what it looks like in stocking stitch and this is this is definitely has more drape and is more pliable than what I'm knitting uh, but it it's definitely softens up even more with more washing so I know it will be a pleasant garment to wear once it's done it's just the knitting process um, I can't say I'm loving it but I'm kind of determined to follow through with it um, I gonna else was I gonna say about it um, oh what I learned is that it 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 uh, move it uh, um, with washing and blocking it shrinks uh, sideways but it stays about the same lengthwise so as far as measuring my sweater for you know what length to wear it etc that should be pretty uh, pretty reliable but I'll have to keep in mind that it probably will draw in a bit which is which is what I want because the size I'm making is if it was any bigger I probably would find it too big so anyway that's my latest project and we'll see I hope I don't lose steam on it because I think it would be a really nice nice garment for spring and summer and um, I think part of what made me think of it too was just uh, I was looking at some linen yarn and there's some really nice linen tops uh, uh, sweater patterns on Ravelry through um, Quince and Company and I just couldn't justify uh, knitting a linen top until I knit up this this hemp because you know I've had it for a long time so I'm glad to get back to it and I'll keep you posted on on how that goes one thing I can tell is it's gonna knit uh, lengthwise pretty quickly because there's uh, with this gauge, it's uh, 22 stitch or 22 rows for four inches, so that doesn't take too long to get an inch done. Or, well, I shouldn't say that. It takes almost an hour to do a four rows, but um, I think it'll work up pretty quickly lengthwise. There's about there's 150 something stitches around, so you know it's a little bit time consuming. So today's blast from the past is going to feature some quilting. When I first started this podcast, I had uh, hoped and expected to feature more sewing segments, but the truth is I have not uh, even touched my sewing machine uh, since Christmas time. And um, with the renovations and restoration going on downstairs, there's a lot of things living in my craft room that don't normally uh, belong here. And I just haven't really had the space to spread out and, and do what I want to do. But I'm hoping to get back to that soon. I have my Little House on the Prairie quilt just um, ready to do the um, strips in between and sashing. And, um, I, you know, I want to see that finished. Anyway, um, I, at last Christmas, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before, I had um, asked for uh, this book, Quilt As You Go Made Modern. And my sister-in-law, I saw I had I had seen it on the Love Sock Wool podcast, and Sarah had made some really neat projects. And I had never thought I really wanted to quilt, although I thought quilts were lovely. I just wasn't into the idea of actually quilting them. Um, and this made me think, well, this is a kind of quilting I would like to do. So my sister-in-law gave this book to me and also another one. So my first project was a set of placemats that I gave to her for her birthday. But my second project was from this book, and or based on it anyway, there is a book uh, project in here called the Triple Shot Sampler. And there's a picture of it done, and then I'll show you um, another picture. That's the finished project. Hopefully that's not too much glare. It's a little bit sunny now, so hopefully you can see that. And uh, what they suggest, they give you some suggestions for some different kinds of blocks that you can sew to go into this quilt sample. And so I had bought a jelly roll uh, in Victoria just after Christmas time and I decided that I was going to make a quilt from it for, for me. 
Uh, so that's what I based the quilt on was that sampler. So the jelly roll had all these different beautiful like yellows and oranges and blues and browns. What had caught my eye was this particular fabric. It's these little birds and I love birds and so I um, that was my main motivation for buying this jelly roll. And then as it turned out, once I had finished my quilt and I was looking for fabric to bind it and I got back in touch with the store that I had purchased it from and they had um, some of this matching fabric. So I used that to bind it and it, the yeah, room, the bedroom that it's in, this is for a single bed size and the bedroom it's in has yellow painted walls. So it, it matches really well. So I can't get all of it in shot, obviously, but I can show you some of the squares. And I was determined that I, I didn't use any of the same patterns twice, although I may have done it on a theme. That is the, um, oh, is it summer solstice or something like that? This, this diagonal um, quilting design is also in this book and that's what I used for my Laura Ingalls Wilder quilt but or my little house quilt but um, this one you can see I used patchwork in some of them anyway they was really fun and I just had a lot of fun just playing and then um, and so I had enough to do let's see I bound it with quite a wide sashing so that I could kind of spread out the squares so I would have enough to, to cover a bed and then so I had enough for what, one two three four by six I think or four by five or four by six so 24 squares and then I had enough left to do a cushion too so that uh, was my first foray into actually uh, making a quilt and I'm very happy with how it turned out I just did a plain uh, cotton backing on it and then the white sashing so yeah so that's my blast from the past this week and I'm hoping to have more sewing for you uh, moving forward I've had to record this little segment a few times my iPod or iPad kept shutting off um, it was trying to get me to I kept saying last week too it didn't have enough storage and I kept deleting the old videos and then what I just discovered is there's a whole um, album of deleted items, which obviously if I'm deleting videos and they go in there, they're taking up lots of space in there too. So I've emptied that and hopefully it's not going to shut off on me again. So I don't know if I already said that there's some people in the group that are talking about project bags. And that's something I've thought about for a long time is sewing some project bags. In fact, um, some fabric in the cubby right behind me here I might as well show you I love this one it's like ice cream cones little cupcakes and I bought this um, well this is a charm pack I think all these really pretty black and white and taupe gray designs these I bought right when I first started quilting. I don't know what I'm going to do with those, but there's some really pretty, pretty ones. And then I found this is really fun too, with um, kind of sewing related flowers. So I was thinking of doing some like little patchwork bags. See, I just can't wait. I, I just I want to get to it. I just haven't had the time. I think that's um, blowing out a little bit. There's sun coming in now. Anyway, look how pretty. Anyway, <laughs> talk about a tangent. What am I reading? I briefly touched on the fact that I'm now uh, reading The Murder at the Vicarage. And um, I finished Mr. H I finished The oh, Adventures of Mr. Quinn. Is that what it was called? <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> Why do I have it in here somewhere?
The Mysterious Mr. Quinn, sorry, by Agatha Christie. I finished that up. It got a little more um, uh, mystical as the book went on and kind of ended a little bit strange, to be honest with you. Um, and the last couple of books I've read have been short stories or, um, you know, same characters, different stories involving them. So this is actually a novel and I've been reading quite a bit this week because um, I want to see how it ends. So as I explained a little bit before, it's, uh, well, obviously it's a murder that takes place at the vicarage of a prominent uh, local, um, uh, local citizen and church member and um, it's Miss Marple's first case so we're getting a look into her um, personality as she was first written by Agatha Christie and interesting again I know I've mentioned it before that reading them in order of publication I'm finding um, it interesting to see how these characters were initially developed by Agatha Christie and noting whether or not they've sort of changed as time progresses and um, She's kind of portrayed a little bit of a, of a nosy Parker in this book. And she's not well liked by the vicar's wife. Um, she's just a little too, too uh, maybe a little too, well, what does she call her? A cat. Um, so uh, that's interesting because I, in my mind, I always think of Miss Marple as quite a likable character and well liked. And in here I'm getting a little bit of a different... Um, different feel for her so it will be interesting going forward if that's just in my memory is faulty and I remember her that way or if in fact she's portrayed in more kindly light as the book moves forward and her nephew uh, Raymond who is a recurring character in some of her books uh, really kind of a pompous ass quite frankly I don't remember him being like that before but he's certainly portrayed that way here so again that's going to be interesting going forward to see how or if his character portrayal changes in in future books so anyway that's been um been enjoying that I'm just gonna uh, get my notes back out here in front of me so little bit about my week. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, I'm feeling really lucky and there's a few reasons for that. The first one, it's such a little thing, but it has just made me so happy. So my favorite mittens in the whole world that I've ever, ever had are these. And they are the Olympic mittens from Vancouver Olympics in 2010. So it's their special because they the Olympics were, you know, in Vancouver, and um, but more than that, they are super warm. They have a nice, um, like a fleece lining to them, and they're like the best mittens ever. And I lost them, and I thought the last time I remembered having them was last winter when we were um, up at a ski resort. And I just thought I must have left them there because I, they weren't where I keep our, you know, hats and scarves and mitts and such. So I went through this whole winter without them and mourning the loss of my wonderful Olympic mittens. And then when my husband was uh, cleaning out his ball bag for the ball tournament last weekend, they were in his ball bag. So I was so excited. So that was Friday and uh, we went to drain the keg on uh, Friday night. And as I explained last week, that's um, sort of the wrap up for the curling club. They have um, a live band and uh, it's just a social. And um, so I'm getting ready to go to that and I just have a little purse I'll take if I'm going out for the evening, just, you know, with my ID and and my, you know, chapstick and and a little bit of cash and credit card just in case I get stuck somewhere. So I pulled out that little bag and went to put some my ID and uh, some cash in this little pocket and I found 20 bucks. <laughs> so I was like awesome. So there was the mittens and the $20 and so I thought for sure I was going to win the 50-50 draw that night but I didn't sadly. But then on um, Monday I think it was I um went on to Ravelry and I had a 
had a Ravelry message and discovered that I had um, won a prize in the Very Busy Monkey January to March knit along, just like I had last year. And this time I won a Very Busy Monkey project bag. And actually, I wasn't expecting this because it, it came from California. It arrived uh, in today's mail. So here it is. It's a really nice canvas bag, as you can see, with a box bottom. And it has um, a snap here. Keep it closed. It's a nice sturdy, sturdy bag, perfect for a sock or a shawl project. And it says on it, inside is my latest project by Very Busy Monkey Designs. And that is actually what I've put in it. Uh, I'm going to be knitting uh, this this uh, knit along that started April 1st. Their theme is texture. So I'm going to be making these cozy check socks for my brother-in-law for his um, 60th birthday. And... Um, not positive. I'm thinking about using this yarn. That's just a Regia or Regia uh, denim style, I think. So I haven't 100% decided on that yarn, but um, I always make something for him that's a commercial yarn that can be thrown in the washer and dryer because I know that's just what he does. Yeah, it's a spread. Jean style. So yeah, that was... Uh, you know, really, really lucky. So that's like three things this week. Oh, sorry, got scratched there. I got fluff or something. Uh, on a more serious note, I'm feeling very lucky also. Um, early Tuesday morning, about three o'clock, um, I was dreaming that I, something was going on that involved sirens, and then I woke up and realized that. I was hearing sirens and I heard a couple of them in quick procession and they you know they were there and then they stopped like really close by so I got up and looked outside and there my whole street was the whole block was full of fire engines and ambulance excuse me sorry very itchy um, and the house couple doors down from us was on fire and um, I later learned that the it's a rental and there's I think there's two two suites in it one upstairs one downstairs and later learned uh, nobody thankfully was hurt the um, a woman had gone to sleep had fallen asleep with a candle burning and woke up to find the place on fire and everybody got out so nobody was hurt or anything but they've their place the suite they were renting isn't livable anymore so they're they're without a home for the, for the time being and lost, you know, probably almost everything. So that it's a sobering thing, you know, it happens so close to home and I just feel very lucky that, um, you know, that it, it could so easily happen to any one of us. Uh, we try and be really mindful with candles, but you think of how, how quickly such something like that can happen. So just, yeah, glad. Glad it wasn't me, but really feeling, um, feeling badly for that family. I didn't don't didn't know them, but you know it's so close to home. So keep that in mind. Um, really watch out for candles, and please get insurance. These people didn't have insurance, and you hear that time and again. I guess they figure if they're renting, it's they don't need it, or it's not going to happen to them. But um, you know, it's, it's, um, yes, it's an expense, but compared to the expense of replacing everything, it's nothing. And, uh, oh, public service announcement here, please, please get insurance. You might really, really need it one day. I know we're grateful we have, have it here, um, after our flood downstairs, you know, compared to what it would have cost us to fix and replace everything. Um, you know, we're really grateful that uh, we're covered. Anyway, I'll get off my, my, uh, what do you call it? Box. <laughs> uh, so yeah, last weekend during the cake, Friday night, and then we had the first icebreaker tournament on Saturday. That's for my husband's ball team. Played three games. 
Um, thank, it did not rain as much as it was predicted to, but it was still uh, kind of rainy, uh, showery, and cold um, for for a good part of the day. And then the sun came out for a little bit in the afternoon, so it was a little bit warmer then. Um, but oh, it's so cold! I came home between the um, second and third game. My toes were just freezing, so I came home. I had about twenty minutes that I sat on the. Uh, couch with with a magic bag heated up wrapped around my toes and set and my wool uh, actually my um my mitered square blanket that's you know a work in progress but that didn't matter it was nice and war warm and woolly and I just warmed up and then headed back to the to the ballpark my husband was going to come home and get changed and warm up a bit but then he got recruited by another team to to um, help them fill out their team because they were missing a few people and it's a fun tournament. So it doesn't really matter if you're playing for someone else. And then we had the ball team back here uh, that evening for a little party. So that was really fun. It always is um, good food and lots of good company and laughs. So then we sort of thought we were going to have Sunday as a down day and, and uh, we had some errands to run but we're going to relax the rest of the day and then um, got a call from my our daughter to say they had a chance to go to the Vancouver Canucks hockey game that afternoon and would we watch the kids. Our Sunday didn't turn out quite as we planned but uh, you know it's still enjoyable and then um, this week has been uh, the Monday Tuesday was my uh, husband's uh, works trade show so he was gone he came home late Monday night and then was away overnight Tuesday so whenever he's got that going on it um, I feel like I have some uh, a good excuse to you know to not do a lot because um, you know he's not here in the evening I don't have to make dinner or anything and and of course, we, what we had, we were having people over on the weekends, so my house was clean because I had cleaned house on Friday. So I actually had a few days this week just to, to relax and do lots of knitting. So that was kind of nice. And um, he, uh, oh, and then we had, uh, I did go to volleyball Tuesday night, didn't really, f I just wanted to, to sit at home. And, um, and then we were supposed to have, the first real ball game last night but they had closed the fields because we had a lot of rain and so that decision was um, made for us so um, yes yeah, so we ended up having a nice quiet night at home too last night so um, relaxing very relaxing week it was, it's been nice uh, and that's, this weekend should be quite nice my husband's got to go in for a while on Sunday but he's going to take Saturday off and we're We'll do again some errands, some things we didn't get to do on Sunday, and then um, we're having dinner with some old friends um, Saturday night, and I'm really looking forward to that. We It's my husband's best friend since kindergarten, and his wife, and um, it's terrible. We always say, oh, we'll have to get together, we'll have to get together, and, and we never do, so... Uh, my husband and, and his friend always call each other for their birthdays. So when he phoned, phoned Cam this, this year for his birthday, we said, okay, let's set a date now. So it took, uh, that was the end of February, and, you know, we kept going through the weekends, and we finally found a time when we were both uh, free. And so that's Saturday night. So we're going to drive into um a place kind of midway between where we live to a restaurant and have dinner there. So that I'm really, really looking forward to. And then on Sunday, um, our family's getting together. At least part of it is we, we kind of celebrate our birthdays in bunches. When I say our family, I mean my siblings and, and, and their families. Um, for, for years, we've, we've celebrated um, our birth, our <laughs> our birthdays so I always say in bunches so my husband and I are part of the spring birthday crowd and we actually celebrated my older sister's April birthday back when she was out here for Christmas she lives in Toronto so she's usually not here for spring birthdays anyway uh, so it'll just be for for Cam and I but um, just really it's a good excuse to uh, get together that 
brings the family together at least a few times a year. Um, I'm sure you can can relate. Everyone's busy these days. It's hard to get everyone um, all together. So that'll be fun. And um, yeah, there's a, I don't can't think of anything really pressing that's coming up next week. Hopefully the ball ball is back on because there's um, hopefully the weather cooperates. I see the sun poking through a little bit again now, but it's been uh, it was rainy yesterday and showery this morning. So. Um, it's spring. That's that's what you expect from spring, but we've kind of had more than our fair share of rain this year. Uh, so yeah, now I think I'm just babbling, so I think I shall end it here. Um, everyone have a good week. Happy knitting to you, and uh, please come by the Ravelry group and show off what you're working on and join in the conversation there. We'd love to have you. So uh, take care, everyone. Have a good week. Bye.